This video contains spoilers for Martin Scorsese's The Irishman and his Casino and Shutter Island movie. And also Sunset Boulevard now that I think about it. In this video I'm not so much answering a question on The Irishman but really asking one myself. You see, if you're watching this video, chances are you're eagerly awaiting for The Irishman to be released and as such you probably know a bit about the story. Most of us going in will at least know that it revolves around Frank Sheeran, played by Robert De Niro and his relationship with Teamsters president Jimmy Hoffa, Al Pacino, and gangster Russell Buffalino, Joe Pesci. Some of us have read the book it's based on, some of us have read one of the draft scripts, and some of us are simply going in only knowing it's a Scorsese gangster movie. The main selling point of the book was that Frank Sheeran said he killed Jimmy Hoffa, that's the whole selling point. But I wonder though, in regards to the movie, have the filmmakers made the film with the intention that general audiences know about Sheeran's claims that he killed Hoffa and whether they think this is household knowledge or not? Because the thing is, it's possible I guess that the filmmakers are assuming that in general people don't know that Sheeran claimed he killed Hoffa. It's the best approach since I think they're largely correct in their assumption. As Sheeran mentions in one of the leaked screenplays, not a lot of people know who Hoffa is today, aside from possibly knowing he disappeared. The reason why I mention this is because I think it's open for the filmmakers to approach the story as a kind of murder mystery, assuming that whoever's watching, at least the vast majority of audiences, won't know that Sheeran will kill Hoffa in the film. After all, it's not mentioned on most hypnosis of the film. If you look online, they usually mention something about a hitman's possible involvement with the killing of Jimmy Hoffa. Could it be that you're supposed to approach the film not knowing the details of Sheeran's claims about Hoffa and thus are invested in the growing mystery and shock at the film's final revelation? I'm kind of waffling here, so let me try and explain a bit more clearly. So say you sit down excitedly to watch this Scorsese gangster movie starring De Niro, Pacino and Pesci. At best, you are vaguely aware of the Jimmy Hoffa disappearance mystery, given that it's a part of the American pop culture. I think that describes the vast majority of the people watching. And then you watch the movie and, going off of one of the earlier drafts of the screenplay, Sheeran opens the film by explaining the process of carrying out a hit on someone you know, saying things like you want to do it to them when they're caught unaware, that you don't want them to have a moment of panic, because they're your friend. Friendship and regret are clear themes emphasised in the opening, in which an elderly Sheeran thinks back on his past. The immediate following scene is set around 20 years earlier, when two good friends Frank Sheeran and Russell Buffalino set off on a car journey with their wives. They engage in small talk and such, and then the film goes back even further in another flashback to Sheeran's past, even earlier, which includes showing how he and Buffalino met and how he grew to respect him. Jimmy Hoffa, the guy whose murder is the main part of the film, doesn't show up for a long while. I think the fact that Sheeran talks regretfully about killing a friend and then having an elongated sequence where he and his longtime friend Buffalino bond could be an attempt from the filmmakers in setting off a red herring in that you assume old man Sheeran is talking about his regret in killing his friend Russell Buffalino. A bit like say, I don't know, how in The Dark Knight Rises you assume it was Bane who escaped the pit even though he never said this and it's later revealed it was someone else. So you go through the entire film thinking that at the end of all of this, Frank is going to kill his friend Russell and then Jimmy Hoffa is introduced. Frank and Jimmy grow close as Frank and Russell. As the film goes on, Jimmy and the mob's respectable relationship comes crashing down and a kind of tug of war ensures with Frank in the middle trying to keep peace. And you as the viewer are possibly still naively thinking Frank is going to have to end up killing Russell when suddenly Frank is given the order to kill Hoffa by Russell. So you're thinking, what happens now? How is he going to get out of it? Then the hit is set up and Frank goes along with it. Hoffa is there at the diner, they pick him up. You're thinking, is Frank going to kill the other mobsters and drive away with Hoffa? In a plot twist, is he going to kill the men that set up the hit like Pacino's film Stand Up Guys? Then they arrive at the destination, the house. The tension is at a point where it is unbearable. How are the two friends going to escape? What's the final move? The other men leave. Frank and Hoffa enter the house. And you're thinking, well Frank has a plan. But then suddenly, bang! Sheeran shoots down his close friend without hesitation. It all goes as planned, leaving you shocked that he went through with it. 
I'm not saying the film is set up this way, but it's a possible angle for the filmmakers to approach the movie with. Charles Brandt, author of the book the film is based on I Heard You Paint Houses, said he did write the novel as a kind of whodunit. I never really saw how this was the case though, since Shirun gets the order to kill Hoffer in the first or second chapter. But maybe you're supposed to approach the novel, questioning events, with the promise the book giving being, well, keep reading and you'll learn what actually happened. Scorsese has done something remotely similar in the past. Casino, for example, had two narrators, Sam and Nicky, three if you want to count Frank Vincent's character. Of course, when you realise a character is narrating, the automatic assumption is that he's going to survive the film, at least up until the event in which he stops narrating occurs. Borrowing from Sunset Boulevard though, Scorsese quite cleverly lures you into a false sense of security with Pesci, thinking he's going to survive until a quite drastic and abrupt ceasing of his narration simultaneously accompanies his violent and shocking death. So there's pretty much two camps of people who watched Casino, those who knew the real story going in and those who didn't. If you knew the story, it gives you a little something extra to think about. How is Pesci narrating if in real life his character is supposed to have been whacked? And if you didn't know the story, then you'd be oblivious and would most likely assume he survives. So I could be talking complete nonsense here, and I do apologise for this video, which pretty much is basically me consisting of thinking out loud. It may turn out that the film doesn't care how much you know or assume about the Hoffa story or Shirun's confession and just plays it straight. But I do think it's quite interesting that for the vast majority of audiences, not us obviously as we know what happens in the end, it's possible the movie is supposed to be a mystery film, that you're supposed to go in not knowing about Shirun's confession. I don't know how likely that is. I mean the book was a bestseller and surely one of the hypes of the film will be that this is the movie that is the confession of Jimmy Hoffa's killer. But maybe it's a case of say like Shutter Island. If you've read the book, you watch the movie and can pick out all the neat clues that he was a patient the whole time. The film is still a great watch. But say you haven't read the book, go in blind and you get floored at the film's final twist. Maybe there's something similar going on with the Irishman in that if you've read the book, you know what he does in the end and can feel his weight of guilt at his actions in the old man Sheeran segments. And if you haven't read the book and go in blind, you get floored at the fact that he actually went through with it and killed his best friend. Something like that. The Irishman is due for release on Netflix at the end of this year. Thanks for watching.